Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you're interested in Photolab, you have made it to the right place. I'm going to spend a few minutes showing you how to customize your workspace. Funny enough, this is something I myself have not done until just recently. Probably for a couple of reasons. If I pop over here to the Customize tab, you can see, and I won't go through the detail of this right now, I'll do it in a moment, I've got my new setup. But if I go back just to an advanced setup, for example, here, and I use these little buttons across the top. I always really enjoyed these little buttons. I think they're nice separations. But I just, the other day I was doing some work and it just occurred to me the extra seconds that I probably take going from tab to tab, jumping back and forth. And I thought really there's, there's a, a very central hub of things that I actually use on a regular basis. And why don't I just set it up so that those are available for me just as I need them. So that's what I did. I went ahead and created my own workspace, created my own palettes, and just set things up the way I like it, I think. I've only had this for about a week now, so, you know, time will tell if I stick with it, if I continue to enjoy it, but so far, so good. So enough of that. Let me jump in and show you how to do it. It's not very hard. Before I do, let me pop back over here to the photo library, just to point out the fact so that you don't beat your head against a wall in endless frustration that, that these these palettes do not move. I am clicking and trying to drag, drag them out, trying to impact them in some way. Nothing happens over here. This is a set layout. Um, you can impact it by you know shifting that up and down, for example, but there's not too much to customize within here. But within the customize space, if I pop back here, we absolutely do have things to customize. And so I guess an important distinction if you've never noticed we've got the buttons across the top you probably have noticed those for light and color and detail etc but if you unclick them so that no buttons are clicked we just get this general menu your menu might look like this or it might look like the simplified one the standard here if i go to dxo standard you can just see there are fewer options put out in this menu so they haven't gone away they're just not out for display right now. So for argument's sake, for, for what we're about to do, I'll put it back on advanced because I will want access to all of the tools. As you're looking through this, you might also notice as I come to the bottom that I've got viewpoint and film pack installed. So if you don't have viewpoint and you don't have film pack, those sections might be missing for you. But this will all work very, very similarly, even if you don't have those installed. I should also point out that within the customized space, these palettes, each of these little areas um, are completely separatable. And you can also right click on them to get some different commands. Um, so if I dock this, what's that? That's my right side back to the right. That'll pop that back over there. But you can just drag them and grab them. Um, and people have sometimes asked me because I often have my histogram out over top of the image. And I often put this away in the past and people have asked, oh, how do you do that? Literally grab it and drag it by the wee um, little handle there. And then I can dock it back to the left if I'm keen on that. But let's say I want to set this up exactly how I want to set this up. Well, I've got two different bits here. So first of all, I need a place to put my stuff that I want to collect. So I'm going to come to the palettes menu and I'm going to create a user palette. Now I'm going to create a palette, but I should just point something out before I go into the palette space, which is the palettes are connected to the workspace. So if I look at workspace, I see DxO Advanced is here, and I'll have a certain selection of palettes here. Bear with me here, but this one doesn't say basic anywhere in that list. If I come back over here to the DxO Standard workspace, it changes um, the amount of tools that are here, and it's got a palette called Basic Tools. Now when I go into Palettes, it says Basic Tools. If I come back to the one that I've created, to My Basics, wait for that to switch, and I come down, and it's got My Common Edits as an option within that workspace. So depending the workspace you're in, you might get availability of different palettes. Just be mindful of that if suddenly you notice that your palette is missing that could be what's going on, that you're just in a workspace that doesn't contain that palette, if that makes sense. So again, for argument's sake, uh, to start things off, I'm coming back to advanced, because I think that's the best way to start out creating your own palette and your own workspace, because then, again, you've got access to all of the different tools, 
and you can just add the ones that you want. So I'll come to palettes and I'll come to create user palette and I will give it a name, my YouTube palette. Thankfully it's on here so I could check my spelling and uh, so I've, I've created the palette now and you, you're looking around saying, where is the palette? Well, is the palette visible? Oh yeah, there's a tick next to it, so the palette is visible. So again, a little bit tricky potentially, but it's going to be at the bottom of this list, my YouTube palette, and it is currently empty, and it says, please drop your favorite corrections here. So I'm going to pull it out because that'll just make my life quite a bit easier. And simple as that, I'm going to come up to the top. I'm going to think about, and, and I did this in order because... I have often in my videos commented that I think if you're going to do a color rendering or a black and white rendering, that should be the first thing you do. So I brought that over like that. And then I thought probably white balance is a reasonably smart idea to do that pretty close to the beginning. So I brought that over. Now I can see how that lights up. You just get that little thing to light up there and it'll go below. If you do get them out of order, you can change the order later. They're, they're fully drag and droppable. So I've done those two. That's probably good to start. And then I'm going to want to get at my exposure and contrast type things. So I'll bring my exposure over and I'll bring my smart lighting over. I do want that. I'll bring my selective tone over. I do want that. I want lots from here. So I'll go contrast and go tone curve from that down. So there. I won't, I just generally leave vignetting on, so I won't bring that over. And then after that, I'm going to, what am I going to want next? I'm probably not, I'll, I'll put denoising at the very bottom because I will occasionally use that. Don't often touch those. I just kind of leave them where they are. Horizon and crop. Yes. I think actually I want those up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to bring those right about there. Horizon and crop just below. Uh, I'll do those sort of after I get the color going on. And, you know, obviously this is all just personal preference. And then I'm going to add my HSL below there. And then I think I will add the denoising below there. So we can call that my palette. So now I can dock that on the left which is what I've done in this instance. I'll go dock to left. It will pop it over here. Um, preset editor, I don't use that much. I'm just gonna close it out. Advanced history, honestly, I don't use it that much. And move and zoom, I don't use it that much. I do definitely use the histogram. And do you know what else I use that I would like to not be a part of this palette, but I want it to have its own palette is soft proofing because I think that's a really important one to have quick access to. So I'll go up here, down to create user palette, and I'll call one soft proof. Again, it's hiding down at the bottom over here. There it goes. Drag it out, come back up to color, drag it over, there we go. And I'm gonna put that over here. It went to the bottom. I'm just gonna right click on it and I'm gonna go move up dock and I'll put that there. So I'll leave that like that. So I've got all of my, um, all of my adjustments, my basic global adjustments that I use on a regular basis right there. Another thing I can do is to uh, right click on that. Pardon me, I've right clicked in the wrong place. I'm going to right click on one of these. There we go, that's what I'm after. So on one of the items and I can do expand all because I rather than opening them up in the moment, I prefer to just have a, have a wee scroll down through. That's just what I prefer. Now, so that's that side fixed. I've got soft proofing, which I will generally keep closed. I've got these others, but I've got this near the top. If I do need it, I'll just click it open. And then I want to have local adjustments on my other side. So literally I'll just close these other things that I'm not interested in having uh, open. Close them, instant watermarking, viewpoint, and oh, I didn't put film pack things in. Yeah, so anyway, I won't bother for now, but I did on my one that I, on my one that I did up, I, I did uh, grain, blur, and frame, um, and put all those in as well. So they are part of my actual one that I actually use. Anyway, I'll just close that for now. So I've got my local adjustments sat here. Right click on that, expand all. So now I've got new palettes. This local adjustment palette already existed. So I'm leaving that as is. I've got it all looking how I want it to look. And I'm going to go to workspace and I'm going to save workspace. 
and I'll call it my YouTube workspace and I'll delete out that business and go save. Just like that. So now as I'm editing, I can do my global adjustments on this side, come across here, do my local adjustments. They're always open and I've got just the ones that I want to use, which I think is super cool. And just keep in mind also, if you, you know, for example, I'll just come up here to palettes and I will grab metadata. Sure. Um, let's say that I wanted to add the metadata one there as well. So now I've altered my workspace by adding that in. I can come up here to save workspace. And as long as it's got the same name, it'll save over top. So you don't need to like make a hundred different ones if you want to make small tweaks. Just make sure it's got the same name and you're good to go. So if now if I go workspace advanced, it goes back to this kind of a look. And if I go workspace, my YouTube workspace, it goes back to what I did, including my most recent edit of adding metadata there. So hopefully that is helpful and gets you started with setting things up for yourself. Like I said, maybe you're like me and you're just quite happy to putter along using the buttons up at the top. But I think, I think, touch wood, this is going to save me a bit of time. And you know what? Anything that can save me time, I reckon, is a good thing. So I do not have enough of it. And I'm getting old. Just a quick heads up, there is a discount code in the description below. So if you're thinking about buying something from DxO and it's a new purchase, you can save yourself 15%. Just follow one of the affiliate links that's down there, plug in the code, doesn't cost you anything, and Bob's your uncle, you will in fact save money, which is always a good thing. So with that, I'll say thanks for watching, have a great day, and I will talk again soon.